Hi, my name is David Siegel. I live in a one bedroom apartment in downtown Washington DC with two boys and their friends. And the first thing you get when you move into a new apartment is a recliner sofa so they can play games on their PS4 on the big screen. But sometimes they need to take a break from that and it's time to play a game of foosball. This is the world's first competition size foosball table coffee table that I built last year. And you can see the video on this here, so you can see that if you like. <clears throat> but you can't play foosball all the time. Sometimes you need even more exercise. So last year, my sister sent me this little net and paddle kit to turn any table into a ping pong table. And we like ping pong. I used to play ping pong competitively. So it was fun playing on this little table for a couple months. But it's only a few feet and it's, and it's round and it's not really ping pong. And this little uh, net is kind of a joke. You have to use a clamp to keep it from sagging. And in a one bedroom apartment, I wanted to figure out how to build a real ping pong table. And that's what I'm gonna show you. The ping pong table I built. And in a separate video, I'll show you how I built it. So I always start with a, with a design from Tamar at 3x3 Custom. She's fantastic. I get good ideas from her and then I modify them. And in this case, I had a certain design requirement. It had to store in a very small place, very small footprint for storage because I move. I move once a year or so. It had to go over the table, easy to move around, lightweight, and Two kids had to be able to assemble it by themselves with no tools. So that's what we have here, a table that two kids can assemble all by themselves because I only have one, one living room and I don't have a den or some big place. So they have to, we're constantly putting this up, playing ping pong and then taking it apart. We probably do that once a day. So here you can see them measuring and getting the distances right. And then they put this hall together using half laps and these pine stretchers with no tools. <clears throat> okay, next, next. And you notice it stores in a very small place. You can actually put this in a closet or if you have a storage space, it stores in just a couple of square feet. All right, and this is all walnut panel legs okay so these tops weigh the each half weighs 46 pounds and it's designed for two boys to be able to put into position nice and slow nice and easy nice and slow slow and easy careful you're way too fast see how you're fast and you're slow someone's gonna get hurt okay nice and easy and you can show underneath these this just drops in That drops in, no tools required. Nice and slow and steady, please, boys. And we have lights. Are you gonna lift it right, Micah? Okay, nice and slow and steady. Slow Thank and you. easy. All right, so the table is together, and now the net. Here's the net. The net is a competition size net for a five foot table and we've modified it i'll do it it's okay we've modified the net so this table is four feet by seven feet and i have a separate video that i'll link to right here on ping pong table sizes so if you're building your own table please check my video on sizes this is a professional net. This is competition net. This goes right here. This goes down. Also, right here, there's a there's a one and an eighth inch. Can you look from underneath? I don't know. There's a one and an eighth inch apron here that has a gripper surface here for the hands. But this is shaved off here, down to one inch, so that we can net clamp. 
Using needle and thread, I shortened the net and made a little ball storage area. Once you have a good table, you're going to want to have good paddles. Now, first about balls, you can keep the balls from your cheap little kit. All ping pong balls are fine. They're all about the same and they're all pretty much tournament quality. So you don't have to worry about a cheap ball is a fine ball. But paddles are not the same. This is the cheap paddle that came with the little $40 kit. You get four of these and they look a lot like this Stiga Raptor paddle, but they're not even close. The rubber, which looks about the same, isn't. So this paddle costs about six, seven dollars, maybe less, maybe five dollars. And it's really only good for defense. You can't use this to attack. It doesn't have any rebound and it doesn't have grip for spin. Uh, so you don't want to use this with your nice table because then you're not really playing table tennis. This table, this is a Stiga Raptor paddle. It has a hollow handle. It is about $65, $70. And this is the cheapest paddle you would see at a tournament because it has high quality fast rubber. Everything else is going to go up in price quite a bit. These are mass produced and $65, $70 is about the best price you can get on a tournament level paddle. This is actually lighter than the other one, but it feels different because all the weight is in the blade of the paddle. And it's meant for aggressive, offensive style play, which you need because most of your shots should be top spin shots. Okay, you don't want to have a backspin game. So let's play a little bit and I want to show you some shots that you can only hit with this paddle. See how well this table plays? Mm -hmm. Whoa, that was off. See that? I can keep it fast and low because I'm using a lot of top spin. A tournament quality paddle will be money well spent to use with your new four by seven foot indoor ping pong table.